Hey, and welcome to Math with Ace, specifically Stats with Ace. Today, we're going to be focusing on histograms and creating histograms in Excel. A histogram is a graph that is used for numerical data or quantitative data. And a histogram looks like a bar chart because it's bars, but the bars touch rather than have separation like you would see in a bar chart. And our histogram is great for large data sets. It allows us to see a distribution. We can describe a shape, the center, the spread of a distribution based on a histogram. It's a great graph. Now, specifically Excel, we're using, we're, there are three different versions of Excel that you can play around with. You can have the downloaded version on your PC, downloaded version on your Mac, or you can use the online version. So I'm gonna show you how to make a histogram reach each of these because the nuances are a little bit different. The first thing that we wanna do is we're looking at this question, we need to enter the data. So the following data are the number of sports played by 50 student athlete. The number of sports is discrete data since the sports are counted. There are 20 student athletes that play one sport, 22 that play two, eight that play three. So I am using the online version of Excel currently. I'm going to enter one. There are 20 that have one. I could theoretically just type one 20 times, but I can also copy and paste that. So if I press control C and then I select all the other cells below that I wanna fill, I can press control V and fill those spots with one. Now, a cool thing about Excel is if you highlight all of those cells in the right-hand corner of your graph, in the right-hand corner of your spreadsheet, you will see the number of cells that are highlighted. So there is a count of 20. That's what I'm looking for. So I have 21s, which is what I needed. Now I need 22 twos. So I'm gonna make a two and then again, copy and paste it down to 44, 42 actually. And let's double check that we have 22 here. I have 22, which is good. And then the rest need to be threes. So I'm gonna copy and paste up to 50. And now I know that I have eight of these. So my data is entered correctly. So what I wanna do now to make a histogram is I want to insert a chart. So from the menu at the top, I select insert and you'll notice in the options, there are recommended charts. But what I want is I want the charts here. There's a drop down box. So I'm gonna select the drop down and they title them for you. So you can kind of see which one looks like a histogram we could pick. There's a bunch of other options, but just don't pick column or bar because those are for categories. So compare values across categories, values for categories, not what we want. We want to be in the statistical area. So in the statistical area, we have histogram, box plot, paratope, which we're not gonna focus on paratope, but we are gonna do a box plot later. So I'm gonna select histogram. And the online version automatically decides which data it's going to use for you, which is excellent. Now there's no title, I want context, I need to give it context. And also the bins, the classes, I have three. Now normally in our class we were saying, or the rule of thumb is square root the number of data sets, so square root of 50, and then round to the nearest integer for how many bins you should have. So we should have seven here, square root of 50 is 7.07. Is .07. But there are only the numbers one, two, and three in our data set. So if we go seven, we're going to be splitting our data and creating gaps, which is not what we want. So actually for this graph, we want three. There are 21s, there are 22 twos, and there are eight threes, but I do not like the, the way that the classes are defined here. There are other statistical programs that you can use that make much better histograms. Um, you can, change the type of um, chart. You can change the chart title. You can create labels. You can change the axes up here, but you can also right click. So you can click the format pane or you can right click down below to get the format of the X axis. So on the right hand side, you're going to get some options. You can tell it where your data comes from, which we have accurate. You could 
change the chart title here. If you select it, it pops down here. I can change the chart title. I could also change the chart title here. So this is number of sports paid. Okay. And then I could say um, above or I could move it if I wanted to. I think above is fine. Now, if I wanted to adjust how many bins there were, what I would need to do is I would need to select series one, sorry, on this right hand side. So down here, you'll see series one. If you open that up, this is where you'll see your bins and your overflow and your underflow bin. They don't have minimum and maximum on this version. And they don't have it on the PC version either that we use, which is a bummer because it's kind of not super friendly. So if I wanted to specify the number of bins, like say I wanted to make it seven, which I told you it would separate, does not look good. I could do that here. I do like the three. But now that I've changed three, look at my numbers. I, I don't love that. But what I could do is I can go up to the horizontal axis and I can change the category to number. And then I can tell it how many numbers behind the decimal that I want. I can adjust things here, which is pretty helpful, but it's still using one to 1.67. I really wanted to go from one to two to three. So I, I could in my overflow and underflow. So overflow is telling me how many are going to go in that last container. And I want anything that is greater than two in that last bucket. And I want anything, actually, it should be greater than um, 1.99. Nope, sorry, 2.1. But I don't love that it says 2.1. If I say three here, it's gonna not, it's gonna say 2.33 to three. So I, I can specify the bin width if I wanted to be one, but then when I do that, I go down to two. So you have to play around a little bit with it. It's not the, the smoothest of histograms um, of uh, software to work with. So I'm gonna go with three here and go back to my overflow bin would be two, yeah, 2.1. Um, I'm sure that you could do some updates to, like you could add some numbers in here and then not fill in. Fill in. There's other, there's options that are out there on the online world as to how to do this best. But for what we're looking at, this does have 20, 22, and eight. All right, let's do the downloaded version for a PC. I'm gonna create a blank workbook and I'm actually going to copy these numbers really quickly and transfer them over. And then again, I'm going to insert, there's all of the recommended charts. So here is where you'll see the statistics chart and we want the histogram. But notice the downloaded version does not automatically select the data. So what I need to do is I need to tell it where my data is. So I can right click and I can change the chart type. I can select the data. So if I select the data, the chart data range is from A1 to A50. Okay, I'm gonna add that. And the series name, let's call it um, number of sports played. Okay. Now there's a little bit of a gap in between. If I wanna adjust the title, I can change it here. I can also change it in the format window. I can add a chart element. I can do a quick layout. One of the cool things about the quick layout here is that they will put the um, the numbers that are in each bin. I do like that. Um, so there's a little bit of fanciness that you can add that wasn't an option in the online version. Now I want to adjust my labels on the right. So again, I'm going to um, format the axis. So on the right-hand side is where my bins show up. This is where I can change the number of bins. I can change the bin width, I can do my minimum, my, my overflow. Um, I want my overflow to be 2.5 and which doesn't work for my bin width of one. 
let's see. So I think if we go to the number of bins, it's better this way. Um, I still, I still don't love, I don't know, one to 1.5. I really think it should go from zero to one to two to three. If you are out there and you know how to make it better, I can't seem to Google the solution, but this is the best we got. So this is the uh, app version for a PC. Next, we're gonna focus on the app version for a Mac. Okay, and this is the app version for a Mac. You see that I have my data loaded here and I can go to insert and I wanna select the chart that is statistical history. And so in Windows, there's typically a little drop down option that will show. I could use insert at the very top and select chart if I want to. That's a function that does work. And I could select histogram, just whatever you prefer once you get comfortable. So I'm going to insert a histogram, but notice there's nothing here. The online version is smart. It selects the data, but I need to tell it where my data is. So I can either start over and select the data, or I can use the option to select data. And what I need to do is tell it the range. There is an icon that allows you to collapse this and select using your mouse, or you can type in what sheet and information you're using. So I'm gonna click this button to close, and then I'm gonna go select the data that I want. Okay, and then I'm gonna open that window back up, and I'm going to say, okay. And now I have the standard histogram as before. I can right click on chart title and edit the text. And this is um, points or soccer points, whatever we were dealing with. But then when I want to adjust the chart, I can right click and format. I can format the axes. I can change the font. But let me go on to the bin itself. I double clicked and that popped up the axes. But I want to, I wanted to select format data series, which actually already popped up to the right without having to right click. So here is where I would do my bin option where I would change the bin width, or I could change the number of bins to maybe make it four if I wanted to. But again, I need to tell it how large I want my width to be in order to adjust back and forth. So that is the way that you would do it in Excel. Um, I did learn that there is a way, I close this, if I wanted to determine maybe my own values or my own, if I wanted to create my own distribution, I could go into data and I can use an analysis tool. So what this means is I could create a frequency distribution based on my tallies. Like let's say I wanted to do from one to two and to three, those are my, what I want the width to be. Um, the, the maximum you would use right here is the highest number you want in each bend, in each bend. So before, for me, I had to go to analysis tool and make sure that analysis tool pack was activated. And this data analysis box pops up. So I'm gonna click data analysis and there are some functions that we're gonna use. I selected histogram. And then I need to tell it where my input is. And I notice if you see, it's got a lot more data than I need. So I'm going to actually select my data again, even though the rest of the values are just blank. But so there's that. And then I'm going to open it back up and it's going to ask me, where is my bin range? And so that is where I'm going to tell it one, two, and three. And when I do this, I'm going to have it in a new worksheet, it's gonna pop up and I'll click okay. And if you notice, here is the bin width and here is the frequency. So right away it tells me the information and I should be able to graph this using a different type of chart. So that's a nice little feature that is analysis rather than us just doing our own histogram and adjusting the bins. Thanks for watching.